If you ask someone off the street where the holiest spot in Christianity is, you probably won't hear the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Most will think of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The word Peter literally means rock, and when Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church, Simon became Peter. Thinking on all the rocks I'd been studying in Jerusalem, it was natural for me to draw a line from the rock of Golgotha to the tomb of St. Peter in Rome. Here we go again. The line connecting Golgotha with the tomb of St. Peter passes directly over the center of the Campidoglio, marked today by the equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius. What we see in the Campidoglio is Michelangelo's vision for the top of the Capitoline Hill, the ancient world's original capital. It took a Renaissance genius to symbolically turn the Roman power equation on its head. So instead of having the Capitoline face the ancient Roman Forum as it had for two millennia, Michelangelo turned the Campidoglio 180 degrees to face the Vatican. The Campidoglio's paving pattern depicts a 12-pointed elliptical star, symbolizing a zodiac, with the sun at the center. It is my contention that this long-distance alignment was originally drawn to connect the seat of power in Rome with the Temple of Venus in Jerusalem. In the Christian era, the tomb of St. Peter in the Vatican was strategically located to be a continuation in line with this ancient axis. It is no secret that Christian churches were often built atop places of ancient worship. In this way, pagan shrines were Christianized and their power absorbed into the body of the church. See how the alignment goes directly over the arch of Septimus Severus? The line passes only a few feet away from the umbilicus urbis Romae, the navel stone from which all distances in the Roman Empire were measured. All roads that led to Rome symbolically arrived here. Following the alignment through the Forum, we see that it goes through the center of the Roman Colosseum, where among other pastimes, spectators enjoyed gladiatorial combat and watching Christians being fed to the lions. This shape in the center of the Colosseum Bowl suggests the Vesica Pisces. Could this be a symbol of Venus? If so, what went on in the Colosseum somehow became the opposition of the love and beauty associated with Venus. The last stop on our alignment tour is the largest ancient Egyptian obelisk in the world, including all of those still standing in Egypt. The alignment from Jerusalem passes directly over the tip of this 230-ton symbol in front of the Lateran. As you may have guessed, obelisks are one of the keys to unlocking the ancient mysteries. This obelisk wasn't always in front of the Lateran. It originally came from the Temple of Karnak in Egypt and was moved to Rome by Constantine the Great's son in the 4th century. The last of the Renaissance popes, Sixtus V, moved the obelisk from where it had been in the Circus Maximus to the Lateran, displacing the equestrian statue of Marcus Aurelius, which as you know was moved to the Campidoglio. Now Sixtus V was a very singular pope. As is the custom when a pope dies, the new pope chooses a name for himself. I find it fascinating that Felice Peretti di Montalto chose a name referencing both six and five in Sixtus V. The fact is Sixtus V redesigned much of Rome during his brief five-year reign. He considered moving the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem to Rome, but the logistics proved to be too much. He did, however, succeed at moving four gigantic Egyptian obelisks within Rome, completing the Dome of St. Peter's, opening six streets, building fourteen fountains, and much more. Roman emperors were the first to raid Egypt in antiquity for its obelisks. By repositioning these obelisks in Renaissance Rome, Sixtus V was motivated by something other than Catholicism. Researchers Jan Witcherink and Aaron Parlier reveal much of what Sixtus V was up to. The red line shows a pair of obelisks aligned to the summer solstice sunrise. The blue line shows another pair of obelisks aligned to the winter solstice sunrise. Sixtus V placed Egyptian obelisks in St. Peter's Square 
and in the Piazza del Popolo exactly as they are to create the red astronomical alignment. He engaged in a bit of urban renewal by opening a straight street connecting the ancient Roman obelisks at the top of the Spanish steps and in front of Santa Maria Maggiore to make the blue astronomical alignment visible. Balancing the masculine symbol of the obelisk, Sixtus V restored an ancient aqueduct and built fountains symbolizing the feminine to accompany most obelisks. Four fountains mark the crossing of the blue and yellow lines connecting the Fontana de Dioscuri and the Aqua Felice, all watery creations of Sixtus V. The green line connecting the Vatican obelisk with the four fountains marks equinoctial sunrise. Sixtus V's tomb in the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore was his final gesture, linking his tomb with the astronomical alignments he set up in Rome. Why was Sixtus V obsessed with astronomical symbolism? Perhaps because astronomy is another key to the ancient mysteries. In addition to the solar symbolism mentioned in the Washington, D.C. Part 2 episode, Bernini's redesign of St. Peter's Square has a deeper reading. Witcherink and Parlier claim the two fountains flanking the obelisk represent a liquid axis symbolizing the galactic midplane of the Milky Way. The axis going through the basilica is the ecliptic, and the other four paths represent solstices and equinoxes. In other words, the galactic and earth crosses coming together is an astronomical take on the underlying meaning of the solar octogram star. To top it all off, the Vatican obelisk is surmounted by a cross. The official story is that this massive pagan symbol was Christianized in this simplest of ways by putting a little cross on top. Hancock and Bival write in Talisman that an obelisk with a cross on top is actually the hieroglyph for Heliopolis, the city where this obelisk supposedly came from. On Christmas morning, this is the astronomical view from Vatican Square. Witcherink and Parlier have observed that the Silver Gate of Birth is due east of the obelisk in St. Peter's Square on the birthday of the Savior. I notice that the galactic midplane leads right down to the Roman Pantheon. This is our cue to have a look at this ancient Roman marvel and explore its deeper meaning.